The second part of inclusion is through communication. When we unite with one another in a community of love, we learn to communicate in open, caring ways. Communication begins with an open mind. We need to be sensitive to how we communicate with one another, with our children, and with ourselves. Some of our churches do an outstanding job of using communications to include persons with disability in their parishes. At St. Sabina, we do have a sign ministry. There are signers here who are really dedicated and, and really, you know, trying to, to make things better for deaf and hard of hearing people. Precisely when we come together and celebrate the presence of God in our midst, we become church. We become a community that belongs together in God. And if we move into the next century, that's the message for the church. To be a people of God in which the Spirit works and keeps calling everybody in. It's important for all of us to be seen first as a person. One of the easiest things to do is make sure that we communicate with language using people first. People first language means focusing on the person first and the description of his or her disabilities afterwards. For example, rather than saying a wheelchair bound man, I might say my neighbor John who happens to use a wheelchair. Other examples might be not a handicapped person, use instead a person with a disability. Not a stroke victim, use instead a person who has had a stroke. People learn and communicate in different ways. Communication is important in liturgy. Adaptations can be made to make the liturgy more accessible. One example might be to dramatize one of the readings. Other suggestions, a quality sound system in good working order. Use of accessibility logos in current communications. Braille and large print missiles, bulletins and other communications.